Hello everyone. This is part 5 of my mob index and, for now, this will be the final episode as I believe I have covered every enemy in the game so far. If you believe I have missed one, let me know in the comments below, and I will include them in future parts alongside any new ones the developers decide to add. For our first enemy, we travel to Meadows, where we encounter the Claw Demon. This interesting mob has no hands, but instead has a claw and a blade instead. As you can imagine, something designed like this, clearly has no intention of being your friend. This demon inflicts bleed when it hits you, which does additional damage. The attack itself does a decent amount of damage while also knocking you back. Defensively, it does have a decent amount of health, but you should be able to kill it. Overall, an interesting enemy, but nothing compared to what comes next. Ah yes. Finally. Arguably the most feared mob in Dark Rise. An enemy with more one-shot ability than any other. An enemy with the potential to end a fatal bridge run, single-handedly. It doesn't really matter what you call him, any Dark Rise player who has played long enough will know exactly who you're talking about once you start describing him. He is infamous. He is, the Stormbringer. Why have I chosen this name? Firstly, it was a name suggested by Hario, and I love it, so thanks again to Hario for the name. But why then, has he chosen this name? Well, my dear viewers, the name comes from the skill which makes this guy so feared. Storm Call. The Stormbringer uses this skill to summon lightning, and if he catches you off guard, on fatal difficulty, especially on the later stages of Fatal Bridge, it's game over. You are dead. He is giving you a one-way ticket back to Elmort. If you somehow survive the lightning, you will be knocked back several times, stunned, and have difficulty using your skills. I wouldn't complain though, as if you aren't dead after the lightning, then you should consider yourself fortunate. The Stormbringer also attacks you with his sword which also does considerable damage too. On the defensive side, the Stormbringer also has good health, meaning it may take you a while to kill it. My advice on dealing with this enemy is to use long-ranged attacks. If this isn't possible, then try bait storm call and dodge at the last second, allowing yourself to attack without the fear of being blasted to pieces. We next travel to Ancient Fortress, everyone's favorite farming spot. Part of the reason why, is because you have multiple boss-like enemies in this area. One example is the Ancient Guardian. This mob may not be as destructive as the Stormbringer, but you do not want to mess around with it, because it also has serious one-shot potential. This is because of the lunge skill it has, which does a lot of damage while also stunning you and knocking you back. Like the Stormbringer, he also has a sword which he attacks you with, with a surprising level of attack speed. Finally, the Ancient Guardian has high defense and health, meaning that an encounter with this mob doesn't end very quickly. The other enemy we are covering which is found in Ancient Fortress is the Exiled King. I've named him this because I remember a unique item referring to the King's Crown. The only reason this mob isn't feared as much as others is because the King is only found in Fortress, and so you don't have to worry about bumping into a level 199 version in Fatal Bridge. The developers really helped us out in that regard, because the Exiled King is easily one of the strongest enemies in Dark Rise. Some of the known skills that the King has includes Meteor, which involves a large Meteor smashing into you, dealing enough damage to one-shot you back to Elmort, as well as stunning you and knocking you back. He also has this other skill which involves him slamming the ground, causing ripples which stun you, knock you back, and do a high amount of damage. He also has this spike ball which he hits you with, with one particular hit able to knock you back as well. Oh and I'm not finished there. If you thought all that was bad enough, the Exiled King can also teleport. Yep. Teleport. So you can't just simply run away either, because he will just find you, and kill you. Dealing with the Exiled King involves timing attacking and dodging effectively. If you are an archer, you could distract him with wolves. You may also want to stun him or simply kill him before he gets the chance to kill you.
Our search for mobs next takes us to Lost Souls Graveyard and from one area boss to another. We are looking at the Gravekeeper. This name was actually chosen by the Dark Rise Discord community in a competition run by Hario. If you want to join the Discord and take part in future competitions, a link will be in the description below. Back to the Gravekeeper, and here we have another enemy I am thankful isn't found in Bridge of Stagnation. The Gravekeeper is easily the strongest skeleton type in Dark Rise. He does a high amount of damage when he hits you with his sword, with one particularly nasty strike knocking you into the air, stunning you while also inflicting various conditions which can include poison and bleed. Like the Exiled King, the Gravekeeper won't accept you running away either as it rushes towards you, slamming into you and dealing enough damage to send you back to Elmort. This enemy also has very high health and defense, making any fight a long one. Even after a long, hard-fought battle in which you kill it, your problems aren't over yet. This is because, as an undead type, the Gravekeeper has the ability to get up again, meaning you may have to fight him all over again. The final area we will explore in this video is Desecrated Fields, which seems like a hell-themed area. It is no surprise then, that the area is dominated by demon-type enemies. One example of a demon type is the Muscular Demon. I'll admit, it's an awful name, but I couldn't really come up with anything better. His muscular appearance would suggest that this mob deals a good amount of damage, and that would be the case. One particular move, which looks like Hulk Smash, has the ability to stun you, while doing a decent amount of damage too. Defensively however, the muscular demon is quite weak and so you should defeat it comfortably. The next enemy found in the area is the mage demon. In a video filled with extremely dangerous enemies, some of which having the potential to one-shot you back to a town, this enemy is clearly the weakest one. The mage demon has one main attack, fireball. It has decent attack speed, and the fireball does inflict the burn condition when it hits, which inflicts additional damage. However, this shouldn't be enough to kill you and like most mage types, the health stats are low enough to make this enemy a really small threat. However, the final enemy in this video, and the final enemy in this series for now, is definitely not a small threat. I call it the boss demon, simply because it seems like the final boss of the area. And like the other bosses in this video, this one does some serious damage. Like the muscular demon, the boss demon does a hulk smash. However, the boss demon does more damage with this attack, as well as stunning you and knocking you back. Like the muscular demon, this demon also does basic punches, but again, the boss does a lot more damage. Finally, if you try and run away, this boss has a charge-like skill which again stuns you, knocks you back and does a high amount of damage. What makes this demon so threatening is that he does this charge immediately after he hulk smashes you, meaning you won't be able to dodge it. This gives it the high likelihood that it can one-shot you and send you back to Elmort. What makes the demon boss more threatening is that it has a high amount of health and defense, meaning it has even longer to try and defeat you, 